So, without further ado, uh, please let us welcome Alison Gow, who will be talking about data and the art of storytelling. Centre, 
station facilities you kind of expect. I didn't know what suite was. I thought that was interesting. Um, and you can see, you know, football, stadium, Asda, all these little things that came out that aren't necessarily reflected in the official pie chart. So that kind of gave me a first indication. Um, and then I spent three days, because last week everybody went on holiday and I was edit editor of the Post and the Echo and it was a very long week. And to go through 28 pages of uh, Kirby people's responses took me three days. Um, but eventually I went through it and I broke down not just each paragraph, but like each thing in a paragraph that people were saying, because people kind of do a bit stream of consciousness and they'll say, I want a shop and I, I want parking. Oh, and the policing around here is shit, you know. And, and it's all in one sentence, so I'm sure somebody here, clever, could write me a programme that would have done it like that, but I'm a bit old school. Um, so I have that, I have that data, and I've put it into a spreadsheet, and the next slide should show, there we go, I made my own unofficial pie chart. And these are a bit blurry now, but you can see one of, one of the things that comes up there that you, you don't see on the official pie, the pie chart at all is keep the Kirby suite. Don't demolish anything, we want to keep the Kirby Street. Um, policing, we want more policing, we want more neighbourhood officers. Um, we're scared, that came out a lot. We're very scared of like some of the youths who wander around and there's nobody checking them. Parking came up, which you could say was covered in transport links, but I actually don't think it is, because I could have got a bus here tonight, but I drove, and my present concern was where do I park? Um, so that's my unofficial slide of it which gave me a, a, an idea of where we should be going. The next slide was just me going on to, um, and the internet is working out, I could have clicked on that, we could interact. Anyway, um, that's a, a site called swivel.com, um, where if you go on, it actually has your um, Excel spreadsheet there, they, they provide one for you, or you can upload your own. Um, I did that put my data in, these are, the, these are what people are saying, these are the number of responses for each one, and from that I could see facilities and shops were the two pressing concerns on that, and you know, they're almost exactly the same, um, and again, you know, Notice Council won't particularly like this, I guess, but Keep the Kirby Suite um, shows up quite high, so that was, that was just another way of me looking at it. Um, the next thing I did on the slide that comes off of this one should be a bubble chart just because could. Um, this is a site called Many Eyes. I don't, I think more people are using it. I noticed uh, a visualisation like this on The Guardian yesterday, so I guess Many Eyes is in alpha now and people are, are using it a lot, but it's interactive. I put my spreadsheet into that, uh, it came up all blue. Then you click on the little drop down box at the bottom, ask it to change colour, uh, it, it will change the colours depending on what the most important things are and when you hover over them it will give you various other information that you've fed into it. It's really handy and, it, and it's good for people like me because we, you know I don't work with programmers or developers or coders or anything like that. It's just like a little team of journalists um, in the office who are in charge of the website or you know, writing online copy and stuff. So this sort of tool is invaluable and I, and I really liked being able to see how my story would develop um, as a visualisation for, for our readers that I could put online and they could play with it themselves and you know, take the data I put up there and add their own to it um, and make a completely different visualisation. So that, that was the bubble chart for many eyes. The other thing that I did on that site, which is on the next slide, was a word tree, which hasn't come out really great on this, but was just for you, does anybody, does anybody use Many eyes for word trees. Has anybody ever done one? I have. They're ace. They, they is brilliant. I, I put the entire text of um, Blade Runner in here once. <laughs> and, uh, and you, you know, it's just great. What happens is, and I'm just going to leave the microphone for a minute. You put your words in a cut and paste box that you, you want to turn into a tree. And you put in this little thing here where it says search, you put a word. Um, and I started off with I, because I wanted to know what people in Kirby were saying. I would like to see all these 
little drop downs that you click on, they zoom up at you and show you, I would like to see, you know, and it goes absolutely down to the smallest details, more police, I would like to see, um, you know, more shops and restaurants and, and it's a brilliant, brilliant way of getting um, a, a kind of a immediate snapshot of a lot of text um, to find, like for example with me, in a government paper, quotes of, about something I was interested in. If I put in, um, what was the phrase, there was something like, um, we need, if you put in we need on this word tree, um, you lose all the text apart from two things, one of which says politicians we can trust. I've got a phrase. So, so that's a word trick. The Science for Many Eyes, I, I can't kind of recommend it highly enough for playing around with text. Um, when, I, when I did the Blade Runner thing, one of my colleagues who's got a sci-fi book almost peed himself. Um, <laughs> especially when you got to the bit about, you know, the, the Howard's last, last speech. And I think he's got that on his blog now, so you can play around with it. But you, you can do anything with Many Eyes, and if you've got... You know, David Cameron's opening speech to Hansard, you do that as a word tree. Um, and people can pick out from that, for example, if they put in crime or immigration or, you know, housing, I think you would, you would just get instantly from that a little beautiful flowing graphic visual of um, any sentences that had contained that. So, sorry I can't show you that properly, I think that's down to um, my firewall settings rather than the Wi-Fi here, but it is really worth it. I can't recommend it highly enough. So that was that one. Uh, those are just my findings. Well, that's what I think, you know, no to cancel. That's, that's the kind of responses on there. These are the things that I extrapolated from those 28 pages of responses. And I think that, um, for me, that says to me a lot more honestly what people in Kirby want. And I'm not saying no to try to pull the wool over anybody's eyes or anything like that. It was just, it was prescriptive. And when you actually get the Vox Populi coming back to you and telling you what, what they feel and, and how they feel let down in a lot of cases, or how angry they are that they had the stadium forced at them or that it didn't happen. Um, you get, as a journalist, I feel I had a better understanding of the story and of that community, and um, it, it taught me a lot using those visualizations to try and look at, you know, a fairly bland PDF. I think there's just one more slide. There you go. Final graphic. I didn't make this one. This is um, I I X K D or whatever. Um, but those are the things that I use. Wordle.net, which is just a great little site. Um, Many eyes. You can do word clouds on many eyes as well. It's uh, it just bubble graphs, charts, bars, strings, and they're all interactive. If you embed them on your website, you know it, it is a really great way of visualising information for your users. Swivel.com. I, I like to make things on as well. And there's two others that you can't make things on, but you can go on there and marvel at um, the talent that's out there. And chartporn.org don't use .net. I was in a, I was in a conference <laughs> on Friday, and somebody used .net and on his work laptop, and I thought he was going to drop dead next to me by what came up. So chartporn.org, um, and that's beautiful. That's just um, companies or individuals, um, very talented graphic designers, making visualizations of everything from the life of a coffee bean to the scale of the oil disaster in uh, Louisiana, and I really recommend that. And information is beautiful as well. Is I think that's just one guy, actually. And uh, he's actually written a book now called Information is Beautiful. And it really, information really is beautiful. It's a site that you could lose an entire day on, so probably best not to do it while you're in work. So that, that's kind of a quick run through of how I've started to use visualizations and, and to, as I see it, as a, as a tool for storytelling, but also as a tool for journalism, not as a, look, I have made a word cloud, which I have to say, it drives me batshit. I hate that. When you, when you just see word clouds stuck in things for the sake of it, it's like, yeah, so you found a website. Um, 
but when you can use them to kind of illustrate to a user, like, this is, how I, this is the story that I've got, and this is how I got there, I think they're really valuable. And, um, and the great thing about them is they're embeddable, they're shareable, you know, like all the things I've done on many eyes, people can take everything else that's on there, um, you can, you know, put on your own sites. And I would say if you do go on many eyes, it's, re it's really worth having a look at some of the Beatles infographics that are on there because, my God, the anoraks have been busy. It's, it's fascinating, but you do wonder when if they have the time. So that's, that's kind of my little visualisation 15 minutes. I, I hope it made sense. I, I hope I didn't bore you all. And if you've got any questions, I'll try and answer them.